today's world insight. COVID-19 rearing its ugly head in Europe. We talk to health experts on the front lines. What's the prognosis? And a Europe travel ban, virus testing woes and battered stocks. The U.S. response to COVID-19. Here is our host, Jan Wei. Hello and welcome to The Frontline, a World Insight, show, World Insight special episode on COVID-19. I'm Tian Wei. We begin with the COVID-19 spread worldwide. There are more than 118,000 cases in over 100 countries and regions. The hardest hit country in Europe, Italy's death toll topped 1,000. In today's virtual consultation room, we have a virologist, a vaccinologist, and a clinical researcher from China, Italy, and Germany, who are working on the very front lines. They will weigh in on the global situation and the ongoing control measures. Before that, this latest. Politicians and celebrities, high-profile figures who tested positive for COVID-19, show the coronavirus spares no one. A creeping pandemic prompted governments around the world to ramp up containment measures. In the past week, Italy announced shutting all businesses other than basic services. France closed all schools. Spain said it is sending billions of euros to regional hospitals. And Iran said it has asked the International Monetary Fund for a 5 billion US dollar loan to combat the epidemic. Some countries stepped up travel restrictions. Amid uncertainty, global shares were battered. The worst in decades. After calling COVID-19 a pandemic, the WHO says all countries should double down rather than ease efforts to contain infections. For more on the COVID-19 pandemic, joining us in London is Dr. Isabetta Gropelli, a virologist and lecturer in global health of the Institute for Infection and Immunity with St. George University of London. In Hanover via Skype, we have Tanvi Kara, who is a clinical researcher of the University Hospital Essen. Welcome to our program. Meanwhile, we are also joined in Beijing via Skype, Liu Yuanli, the Dean of the School of Public Health at Peking Union Medical College. Well, Dr. Liu will be talking to us later in the program. Let me jump directly to our questions. Really, the latest situation in Italy and Germany are both concerning. Uh, Dr. Gropelli, even though you're based in London, you've been following everything in Italy. Tell me more about that. Absolutely. The, the situation in, in Italy is uh, hardly something that we can ignore. Either it doesn't matter if you are in Italy or if you are anywhere else in the world. The most crucial issue is that uh, the number of cases is high. It's in there uh, above 10,000 now. So the response uh, from the national government has that to step up the measures uh, and uh, implement more strictly what are the containment measures uh, that have been proven to be successful in uh, uh, containing outbreaks uh, somewhere else in the world uh, and in the past. Mm. From the point of view of the ground, you know, it is, uh, these are tough measures. So they are tough measures at all different levels, uh, especially for the members of the public because they need to change the way of life. What about that regional, you know, uh, central or federal level debate going on in Germany? We understand, let's take a look at this, Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, talking about 75% of German could be infected if not adequate measures being taken. Take a look. When the virus is out there, the population has no immunity and no therapy exists, then 60 to 70 percent of the population will be infected as long as this situation continues to exist. We won't be asking every day what this means for the deficit. This is a special situation and we will do what is necessary. Ms. Kara, would you like to respond to what yes. Chancellor Merkel just said? 
Mm-hmm. Um, so actually, I believe, I mean, I'm coming from the epicenter of the outbreak in Germany, which is just a few kilometers, the Heisenberg, which was the uh, original epicenter for the German outbreak of COVID. Uh, so what I believe is, well, yeah, this is the most populated part of Germany, so that's why we have more than 600 people already infected, uh, with have been tested positive. But I believe that the German authorities are taking all uh, actions and precautions in their capacity that they could. But for sure, if she says it's around 60 to 70 percent, they will be. But that doesn't mean that the fatality rate is going to go high. It would just mean that people would be exposed to the virus. They would be carrying it, whether they will be symptomatic or asymptomatic and whether they will be actually leading to a transmission. This is what is something that we have to follow up. Earlier, a post put on Facebook account by Dr. Daniela Martini, who has been working in one of the northern cities, it's called Bergamo. He's been talking about the lack of complacency against the virus at this time. He said, after much thought about whether and what to write about what is happening to us, I felt that silence was not responsible. He also has been uh, talking about how hospitals, all this rapid transformation, he said, brought an atmosphere of silence and surreal emptiness to the corridors of the hospital that we did not yet understand at that moment. But however, now he said that I still remember my night call a week ago when I was waiting for the result of a swab. When I think about it now, my anxiety over one possible case seems almost ridiculous and unjustified. You see how hospitals, doctors changed overnight as a result of this devastating disaster. Dr. Gropelli, I wonder whether you have heard similar things from your colleagues and friends. Unfortunately, I have. Uh, what has been described in, in Bergamo it has not been uh, an, an isolated uh, uh, situation, but has also been uh, uh, taken on board by the, the authorities uh, to uh, step up and uh, absolutely increase uh, um, at many levels of the response. This has included, uh, uh, for example, the uh, sourcing of uh, uh, hospital beds and intensive care somewhere else, uh, and also the equipment that are required for that. The reality is that uh, when it comes to an emergency, when it comes to a pandemic, that what it is now, uh, we don't know when it will come. We know that uh, it's a possibility, but we don't know the details, uh, when it will start and what will be required. And there's always uh, the very first few weeks, uh, especially, unfortunately, where a country, a situation, uh, local authorities, medical doctors on the front line that need to react. And it can be challenging. The point is uh, getting out of the situation very quickly, yeah. and uh, this is uh, what Italy has been doing. Mm. Uh, Dr. Kara, you are at the epicenter, near the epicenter. So you know how system, medical system, is being swamped right now by the disaster. So what you see, how much can it be of reference for the rest of Germany and also for many of those watching our program today? Um, so I would just say that uh, for sure there uh, could be a point that there could be like shortage of the healthcare workers at point, but uh, we are taking all the measures that we can. And as the researchers and as well as the medical staff, we would just tell to the general public or even to uh, the entire Germany and to the hospitals that at this point, uh, the greatest enemy is actually the fear, the rumors and the stigma. And what I would really, really focus and emphasize on that we should just look at the facts, the reason and solidarity. But you know, some of the things both of you said Mm -hmm. have already been said once Mm -hmm. and again by every day's press conference of WHO over the past Mm -hmm. one month. And also that has been said in many national campaigns here in China where I am over the past, Mm -hmm. shall we say, more than one month and a half. So why would it still at the very beginning stage for all countries almost to walk everything from the very beginning again? Uh, Dr. Gropelli. There is uh, something to be, to be considered uh, that, uh, and as much as I am a virologist uh, and I concentrate on viruses, 
viruses do not exist uh, without people. And when it comes to an outbreak, uh, the most uh, difficult uh, aspects are actually dealing with people. And I do not mean the patients. That's for the highly trained medical doctors uh, to, to do and for the uh, facilities. But it's convincing people, to getting people on board. And I think uh, as, as a society, we, or as the authorities, we haven't gotten that uh, um, as, as well as we could have. But I think the message now has to be heard loud and clear. And there is uh, no... Um, face uh, for uh, thinking that this is not uh, a serious uh, problem. This mm. is a pandemic and we all need to understand that. Yes, indeed. Uh, Tammy Kara and Elisabetta Gropelli. Uh, Elisabetta, you want to stay with us? Meanwhile, we want to say thank you to you, Ms. Kara, from Germany. Uh, once again, we are joined in London by Dr. Isabetta Gropelli, a virologist and also lecturer. And meanwhile, we are joined in Beijing, Professor Liu Yuanli, the Dean of the School of Public Health at Peking Union Medical College. What a pleasure once again to have both of you. Uh, Professor Liu, you've been attentively listening to your two colleagues earlier, their discussion about the latest situation in Europe. Your takeaway. Yes, uh, obviously uh, the world is at a very critical moment uh, of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, what um, <clears throat> I think other countries can uh, have some important takeaways from China uh, are two things. One uh, is that uh, every country needs to uh, adopt a very comprehensive approach. I really don't like uh, the binary aptitude uh, either you take the containment approach or you take the mitigation approach. Mm -hmm. I think the both are needed. I think the WHO is a category of four uh, groups of countries are helpful, but I think the uh, involvement of the countries are very dynamic. I think the countries, uh, even in class one or two, uh, need to be constantly on guard uh, uh, to um, uh, prevent the countries from progressing to the uh, worst uh, uh, situations. Secondly, I think at the national level, I think, uh, uh, number one, you need to take a comprehensive approach, prevention, control, treatment, and so on and so forth. But at the uh, uh, regional level, a differentiated approach is needed. So that will be my two uh, cents of uh, advice at uh, upfront. Mm. Of course, uh, Professor, if I could, uh, earlier you heard uh, from uh, Dr. Grappelli about uh, the latest situation in Italy the medical system and the uh, medical staff have been overstretched and extremely pressured. What is the way out? Is there something, lessons experience China can share with the others at this point about that? Uh, China mobilized uh, nationally uh, to send uh, uh, more than 42,000 uh, healthcare workers uh, uh, to, 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 to the aid to, uh, of, uh, of Wuhan and Hubei. And that, of course, was a big help. So I think uh, the whole country, uh, Italy, need to be mobilized, and the other areas uh, has to uh, come to a rescue uh, uh, in the in the uh, most the hardest hit areas to prevent uh, the <coughs> transmission. Dr. Grappelli, are those applicable in Italy? You think? Um, absolutely, absolutely. We've already started seeing uh, evidence uh, of uh, how the aggressive measures have been uh, taken on board in Italy and uh, implemented. And I absolutely echo the need uh, that is also um, being implemented in Italy about a comprehensive uh, uh, approach. It's not a matter of semantic containing and delaying. It's about doing something right now but it's also uh, comprehensive in terms of general. There is no sector of society and of the country that is not going to be affected by this. And therefore, the, the, the pandemic uh, word is the, is the best word because the, it actually means for everybody. And uh, the um, approaches uh, the, the, and the aggressiveness of the approaches need to come from a, a, a comprehensive and general uh, point of view. But on the other hand, I want to invite your opinion, both of you, is about the unfortunate choices people have to make. Now, when the hospitals are overwhelmed, 
when you have very limited number of doctors and nurses compared to the number of patients that have to be attended at various levels of symptoms. So how would you prioritize what lives to save? Unfortunately, I'm saying that, but that is a reality people have to deal with every day. So uh, Professor Liu from China's case, yes. Wuhan overwhelmed. You were providing the critical advice to the Chinese central health authorities on a daily basis. So what is China's way? And Dr. Gropelli, what about that debate and also practice in Italy? Number one, uh, in uh, the most <clears throat> severely hit areas like Wuhan, treatment is prevention. You know, it's better to uh, get uh, the <clears throat> uh, suspected cases especially uh, the patients with severe symptoms mm. uh, get to the institutions where they can get organized uh, attention and treatment. Uh, but number two, we also realized that, that the severity as well as the case fatality ratio is closely related to the underlying uh, diseases uh, uh, such as the cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, hypertension, and so on and so forth. Mm. So the triage system needs to take into account not just uh, whether they are confirmed uh, COVID-19 or not, but also what type, uh, to what degree uh, they suffer uh, from the <clears throat> uh, underlying diseases, other diseases. China has been put on its own uh, national resources. I mean, of a whole nation, 1.4 billion, but if you look at the size of Italy and the resources it could tap into, uh, probably uh, it's going to be difficult uh, to start something immediately and uh, for the long term. Uh, but Dr. Gorpelli, what do I know? You know much better than I do. Uh, will what Professor Liu said uh, apply to your system? And also, what has been the practice Italy used in order to deal with it? Do you have to uh, choose between certain social groups, age groups, when it comes to what life to save and how to save it more efficiently? The, we have heard uh, personal experiences from medical doctors uh, in Italy on the front line. And the reality is these are highly trained professionals, uh, especially when it comes to intensive care. And they are used to uh, asking themselves uh, what's the best uh, uh, practice uh, for the patients they have uh, in front of them. Clearly, the situation of an outbreak is, uh, is a heightened and stressful situation. So, but these questions have been they, they asked uh, routinely, and they are required by their own, uh, by their own professions. And so they have quite a lot of experience in dealing with that and keeping a, a reasonable and a cool head and active effectively. Mm. In terms of the, um, the situation in, in Italy as a, as a nation, as a, as a country, uh, we need to remember that at the moment uh, the worst hit uh, region is, is only one region or it is uh, uh, spread over only part of the country. And this is particularly important because it means that, that at the moment there are other parts of the countries that can help. They have two major targets at the moment. Help Lombardy, for example, you know, in sharing their capacity, mm -hmm. in lightening their capacity, and also the other most important thing that they have to do is remain with lower cases. So very high cases in one region, but there is capacity in the other regions, and this uh, is what uh, needs to be done, is shedding the load and, uh, prefer, and preventing the uh, free regions at the moment to, uh, to um, and yeah. make the situation worse. Right. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, Tianwei, uh, may I add, I really want to uh, <coughs> uh, call our attention to the importance of getting the airline workers uh, involved. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Director General of WHO uh, said at best, we really need uh, all of the government and all of the society approach mm -hmm. to deal with the uh, world pandemic, uh, COVID-19. So in China, the community workers you know, the volunteers and, uh, and so on and so forth uh, are very important unsung heroes uh, in the current success of bringing the uh, crisis under control more or less. So I think uh, airline uh, workers and uh, uh, social organizations, mm -hmm. uh, trade unions and church groups and so on and so forth can be mobilized.
Uh, so let me give you both of you one chance to ask each other a question. The most urgent question you have in mind, whether it's about your country or about the general situation. Let me have Dr. Gropelli to go first to, your, to our Chinese guest. Uh, thank you. Uh, the advantage is going first. Uh, I would like to ask the Professor your opinion on uh, testing and uh, how much testing has helped uh, uh, China to, to curb, the, to flatten the, curb, the curve and curb the outbreak. Mm. Professor. Yes, uh, uh, I think it uh, 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 played a very critical role, uh, especially at the uh, uh, containment stage. Uh, to you know, uh, basically block the chain of transmission from epic center of Wuhan to other parts of China. So uh, China adopted a very quick uh, testing uh, approach, and that really helped uh, not only uh, uh, you know quickly uh, to uh, slow down the transmission of the viruses to other parts of the country, but also within uh, the most affected communities uh, in Wuhan and other Hubei uh, regions. Now, Professor Liu, you have a chance to ask uh, Dr. Yes. Propelli. Uh, I'm always uh, fascinated by the social culture of uh, uh, Italy. You know, uh, Italy people are uh, you know, uh, mostly seen by the Chinese as the uh, most romantic and social people yeah. in the world. And, and now, uh, in, in light of the crisis, you need to do very, very challenging and difficult tasks. That is the social distancing. So, uh, uh, number one, uh, how are the Italian people, uh, you know, are dealing with that uh, uh, necessary and very comfortable, uh, uh, untraditional uh, ways of interaction? And second, uh, whether uh, the <clears throat> psychological stress mm -hmm. and mental health pro problems uh, might be some concern to you. Doctor. Absolutely. Um, what you describe, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a massive challenge uh, for, for the Italians. Uh, the, the measures that are required uh, to fight uh, this virus uh, go very much against uh, what we naturally do. And so it requires a deep change uh, in, uh, uh, in the way we go about life, uh, in the way we interact with each other. Um, and I think uh, you're right, when it comes to um, viruses, epidemics or pandemics, uh, we, uh, especially when we are scientists, we look at the virus itself, but the virus does not exist without people. And people need to be taken into consideration in the, in the bigger picture. And when I say people, it is society. And uh, this is a, a major aspect uh, uh, for Italy. The reality is there's also, as uh, human beings and has, as Italians, uh, we are quite resilient. We are quite down to earth. And, uh, and I think this is the Italians are going to come together. Our Prime Minister has uh, absolutely uh, asked us uh, to do that, and he has faith in us, uh, because this is, this is what, what we are, this is what we are capable of doing, yeah. and uh, I am very sure we will be doing it. And we need to be united yeah, in I? a way, to be optimistic yes. at the same time when we are facing a daunting situation. We understand Chinese medical workers, uh, some of them, uh, a few number of them are already in Italy to cope uh, uh, yes. with the crisis mm -hmm. and to coordinate uh, and with our to Italian come. colleagues. Go ahead. Professor Liu, very briefly from both yes. of you for our final words before we wrap it up. Yeah, we are uh, living in an interdependent world, and uh, China has been uh, obviously uh, fighting very hard and uh, has taken the, a big hit uh, to protect itself and the world. And now, uh, luckily, we uh, more or less uh, brought the crisis under control. So we are ready to uh, help other countries in okay. need. Uh, both in terms of knowledge transmission, the seventh edition of guidelines of diagnostic and treatment already got translated into English and will be widely disseminated. And the increasing number of medical teams uh, are on their way to aid uh, Italy and other countries. I see. Uh, Dr. Gropelli, also your final words, please. Absolutely. It's, it's fantastic that, uh, that China has sent uh, a team of experts to, to support uh, uh, the Italian teams and, and share the, the experience to make a much more effective uh, um, outbreak or pandemic response. But this is also happening at much higher level. In a, a intensive care requires equipment and uh, our respective uh, foreign ministers have met to, to start also dealing with the uh, uh, supply of those, those equipment. So uh, mm. lots of things 
things uh, to, that can be learned from China and it's uh, absolutely important that uh, collaboration and uh, experience and uh, um, efforts are joined and put together. I want to thank both of you for taking your time out of your extremely busy schedule. Uh, Professor Liu Yuanli, who has been providing advice to the Chinese government's effort against the COVID-19 on a daily basis, and also uh, Dr. Elisabetta Cropelli, uh, an Italian uh, virologist and now based in London, have been following everything going on in Italy. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All the best to your people.